So caffeine is the most consumed psychostimulant worldwide. Over 1.6 billion cups of coffee are drank each day worldwide. But it's often something that we overlook and something that people can get dependent on without realizing it. You get that rush of, it, a, a rush of adrenaline, that increased focus and that perceived alertness that come, becomes associated with it. And it's easy to feel like, like you're getting hooked on it. I wanted to share my personal experience trying to quit caffeine. Mm -hmm. I tried to quit last year cold turkey, so I'll get into that later in the video. First, I'm just gonna talk about the positives and negatives associated with using caffeine and generally the, the, rec the recommended uh, portions of caffeine per day. So how does caffeine work? Well, in short, it blocks something called your adenosine receptors in your brain and spinal cord. And this antagonistic effect where it's blocking these receptors then leads to the release of dopamine and noradrenaline. And this gives us the feeling of being more awake, feeling more alert, and people re report feeling more focused on tasks. And I think that's why it leads so many of us to be caffeine junkies and like that rush first thing in the morning. Interestingly, some studies have found that this blocking effect on the adenosine receptors in our bodies can actually reduce the risk of developing neurological diseases such as Parkinson's and Alzheimer's in later life. How long does caffeine last in our systems? I think this is something that a lot of people actually overlook is that they don't realize that the residual caffeine left in your body from having a coffee or a tea etc can actually last up to 10 to 12 hours so if you have a coffee in the afternoon even if it's 1 2 p.m when you're trying to if you're trying to go to sleep at night at 10 11 p.m that night you could still have residual traces of caffeine in your system this is going to keep you more alert and could impact your sleep so my rec my recommendation personally is to cut off caffeine at 11 a.m. or 12 p.m. latest. That way it should help improve your sleep. One issue you face with caffeine is that it's quite difficult for us to regulate our caffeine intake by ourselves. Different types of coffee, for example, brewed that you'd get in a coffee shop versus instant coffee that you get at home are going to have different caffeine in caffeine um, portions in, or intakes. So for you to for you to measure your intake accurately is actually quite difficult now the average cup of tea will contain about 70 milligrams of caffeine and most instant coffees will be about 80 to 90 milligrams of coffee this is per 180 ml cup rough guidelines things like green tea are about 35 milligrams per cup of 180 ml cup and things like chocolate, soft drinks are, uh, are gonna be slightly lower. So what is a safe caffeine dose? Well, the general recommended top end allowance per day is 400 milligrams. So this is equivalent to about four strong coffees or about six teas. Now, this is gonna differ person to person and everyone's tolerance is gonna be a bit different. This genetics definitely plays a part here. And I definitely would not rec recommend caffeine to anyone that has a history of anxiety or depression, because it's definitely been, it's been found by a number of studies that excessive consumption of caffeine, so upward of 500 to 600 milligrams per day, has been shown to give side effects of anxiety and nervousness. So my personal experience with caffeine, so. During the first lockdown in March last year, when I was I was working um, and very busy with work, I was drinking quite a lot of coffee, and I think I, it was quite hard to estimate how much I was actually consuming per day. If I had to estimate, I'd probably say between 300 and 400 milligrams per day, which is still within the recommended, you know, maximum allowance and and isn't considered too excessive. However, I was I was having three or four coffees a day, and I did definitely feel that I was relying on the perceived increased focus from having having that alertness in the morning once I had my coffee and I was definitely abusing it slightly especially when I was getting into the afternoons I still having my last cup of coffee at 2 3 p.m. which is was then probably having a knock-on effect with my sleep so having underestimated my caffeine co uh, consumption I I didn't feel any issue in just quitting cold turkey so which in hindsight is an obvious mistake of mine, but 
I try to go from three or four cups of coffee per day to nothing rather than doing a staggered approach and easing it off. And I found that I did actually experience some anxiety and nervousness and the main issue I faced with this was mood swings. I would, within the same day, go from feelings of you know, content and happiness to real, real lows and it actually shocked me how low I was feeling at times. So, you know, be care be careful if you are planning on quitting caffeine. I wouldn't recommend it doing it cold turkey, especially if you're going from three or four cups of coffee a day down to nothing. So ease it off within the space of a week. Go from four cups, say, to three to two. Eat, use tea as well. Or replace coffee with teas and just gradually ease that consumption down. And you shouldn't have too many of these negative side effects that I experienced. But something to be aware of is that it will it will affect people differently and, I, and for me personally I, I did find massive mood swings and it's something that I've had to control since then so going forward what I've been doing since is limiting myself to two, two, two cups of coffee a day in the mornings and I always make sure to cut off my caffeine consumption at midday to ensure that it's out of my system when I go to bed and I'm getting a good night's sleep and my sleep has improved dramatically as a result of doing this. All this being said, caffeine can be an effective way to increase your focus. So it, it can be effective in helping you focus during workouts and I and I, I do think that it's, it's very useful to use first thing in the morning before you work out. But as I say, just make sure that you are in control and you are not abusing it. So key takeaways from this, make sure you're not excessively consuming caffeine try and cap it at under 400 milligrams per day but i would recommend going slightly lower than that and seeing how your tolerance is make sure to cut off at midday don't let it affect your sleep and just use it every as as i say use everything in moderation be sensible with it to get the benefits of it without getting too many side effects i hope you enjoyed the video and if you did take something from it please drop it a like Subscribe for more content and I'll catch you on the next ones guys. Have a good day. See you later. Bye